officially NFL draft season, ladies and gentlemen. It always is really here on the channel. But today you have the two specific NFL draft analysts on the channel, or at least the ones who, who like to get to it as early as possible. Kean McDermott and Charlie Nidell. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Esports Scoop, and welcome to the first NFL draft big board for the 2022 draft. Our 1.0 big board will probably have a 2.0, and I would think a 3.0 yeah so we will uh hopefully be getting at least three different big board videos up but uh today we have our 1.0 we have 25 prospects ranked in this year's class me and charlie have our own separate big boards and then we narrowed or not narrowed it down we you know are we average them out to the best 25 if you want to check out the full graphic it'll be on our instagram as well but uh charlie i'm really excited to get into it. we're gonna be talking about some some draft prospects so without further ado make sure you guys stay tuned and we'll see you after this all right so 25 to 21 is up on uh your screen right now obviously as you can see 25 is led or you know we we end it with nick benito edge oklahoma and then we go to devin lloyd out of utah trent mcduffie nicobe dean and charles cross charlie out of those players who is your favorite guy or who is someone you are looking out for uh, from those players. I really like Trent McDuffie. I think there are a lot of top corners in this class and Trent McDuffie's unlucky to be what I believe is our cornerback five in this. Mm -hmm. And um, five cornerbacks in the top 25. It's crazy. We could see probably six corners go in the first round. And um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that I've seen that in recent years, mm -hmm. but I really like Trent McDuffie. He's, he's got one issue and, and you could say it's a really big issue. And that's he can't really match up with bigger receivers. He's small. He's 5'11", so he's a little bit undersized for the corners we see nowadays, especially going up against a receiver who's 6'2 plus. It'll be a hard matchup, but he's super athletic, and that's why I really like him. Uh, super athletic. He can play both in man and zone, and I think he's a great prospect to add to your team. And he can, I know he doesn't have quite the speed to be in the slot, but he's got the talent to play in the slot and he's got the talent to play on the outside. So as long as you're you're matching him up, as long as you've got a taller corner that can take the guys like DK Metcalf and those just super tall receivers that he cannot guard. He's just not big enough to guard them. He's not as physical. Uh, but if you're matching him up with someone like Terry McLaurin, I'd love to see how he plays against someone like Terry McLaurin, who obviously is amazing. So but uh, but I'd love to see him in both man and zone, pretty much in any scheme. He, because he can play both those roles, I really like his athleticism and his ability to make plays on the ball. My guy from 2921, I have Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah. He is our linebacker too. I have him as the top linebacker in this class. Obviously, not a you know marksman or a top linebacker uh, in this class that we had from Micah Parsons last year, but. That's what it is with every draft class position value goes up and down. But Devin Lloyd come out of Utah. I mean, we're just seeing every single position get bigger and bigger as year goes on. This guy is a, a ideal size guy. And when you look at all the players I've chosen, all of them are basically kind of bigger, more modern, uh, you know, players for their position. And, and, and Devin Lloyd is not a, a an exception to that. 6'3", coming at 235, huge for a linebacker. can play Mike and Will. We see him generally and the Will for the Utah Utes, but, you know, can really do it all. Generally a 4-3 scheme. So that's, he has the versatility, 3-4, uh, I think. He's a little bit too raw to play in that 3-4, obviously. He's a little bit too jittery for my liking as a linebacker. Definitely um, can get fooled in the run game. But besides that, this guy's a really, really good off-ball linebacker. I like his coverage a lot. I think that's what it stands out a little bit more to me is his off-ball ability. But he can as well blitz. We saw that um, in some of his games for Utah, I believe, against, um, I'm not sure, USC. I don't think they played USC. I'm not sure who I was looking at it. But uh, he, you know, he's, he's definitely can pass rush. Um, and definitely good in coverage. And I think looking at the modern NFL, having a good cover linebacker obviously is helping with the more, uh, I guess, more abundance of good tight ends we're starting to see with Waller, Kelsey, obviously, and kind of younger guys starting to come up into the league. Obviously, Pitts now. You know how tight ends are much more just bigger receivers at this point, and having a linebacker who can cover them obviously is a big deal. And 6'3", he's an imposer on, on a defense. So I think, you know, you really look at him as kind of a uh, Jamin Davis, Jamin excuse Davis. me, from uh, Washington. It makes me sound like I don't know the player when I love Jamin Davis. But uh, yeah, so he kind of reminds me of him, but but bigger. So this guy definitely has a ton of potential. Um, and in a linebacker class that I would say is pretty open, I think this guy could take the linebacker one role. But again, the college season is not over. So the, this big board will be updated. But Charlie, move on. So those are the players that are good. But, you know, later first round picks, we're going to go up into the, I would say 20 to 16. You could see these guys maybe being top 10 by the end 
of the season. But who is your guy in our 2016 range? Obviously, we have it up here. Some very, very good players. But, Charlie, who's your guy in this section uh, of the board? I had a tough one deciding on this one. And this is our... I, I think my pick for this one is Traylon Burks. I, I really like Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. And his one flaw is also kind of a strength and in that same way his his strength mm -hmm. is kind of a flaw and that's that he's moved around so he can play in many different spots for arkansas and arkansas have used him in many spots on the perimeter and in the slot of, of course those are those are the most most of the ways that receivers line up but he does a lot he lines up as a hybrid with his motion kind of like how we see the chiefs run their offense with tyreek hill and miko hardman running around in the backfield doing whatever the hell they want just to get on the ball and I really like that about him. It makes him really versatile. But at the same time, it's a weakness because it means he hasn't been nurtured into one position, one 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 real role. And that that means he could struggle when he gets to the NFL level where he's competing for a spot and he's not he's not a true perimeter receiver and he's not a true slot receiver. So there's no spot where you can play him where he'll dominate. He'll just do well in every spot. And a lot of the time you look for in these receivers something they can do really, really well. Everybody's got their their big strength. I mean, and, and Traylon Burks doesn't necessarily have that. He's just he's just solid all around. But that's why I like Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. Of course, I know who you're going to talk about, but why don't you get straight into that? Yeah, definitely. I have another receiver, probably my favorite one in this class, and that's Drake London. Obviously, fractured his ankle. Um, I, I think it was against Oregon. I might be completely wrong. Either Oregon or Oregon State about halfway through the season. So he is now out, I believe, for the rest of the year, which I would say hurts his draft stock. But this guy was on pace to arguably be the best receiver. He was having a dominant season. I believe 88 receptions, over 1,000 yards. Um, I think double-digit touchdowns, if I'm not wrong. I mean, when you look at Drake London, if you know this guy, if you watch USC football, if you watch college football, you know this guy right now. Um, is one of the most versatile big receivers I've ever seen. And I think when you look at him, obviously 6'5", 209, this guy is, is an imposer. And I think we've seen USC in, in past years kind of pump out big guys like a Michael Pittman. Um, and, and, and Drake London, I would say, is definitely better than Pittman coming out. Obviously, this guy's definitely a, a first-round selection. Um, you know, with that size, obviously comes a huge catch radius, and we've seen that um, this guy can go up and get the ball. This guy is, is, I would say, probably the best going up and get the ball. Obviously, having that size you know, helps him do that. But he, he's, he's a guy you're running on a streak. He's a guy running on a fade. He's the Mike Evans type guy you're running on a fade one-on-one -on -one, um, in the red zone and you're going up and getting it. I think what we saw him, you know, really, really lethal in is in that red zone, running that slant, having an outside corner, but being able to kind of get him on your backside and catch it in for the touchdown while still, you know, having hands on you. So I think, you know, and then he offers a ton of versatility. Obviously, he kind of plays like a six foot six two receiver in terms of his agility, um, but has that much more size. I um, mean, he can kind of play slot boundary and weak side. And and we can see USC ha know this guy is fantastic. Obviously, he had 39 percent um, target share, which is ridiculous. I mean, I've, I don't even remember the last time I've heard that. That is a absurd amount of target share. So they know how good he is. He's the kind of guy who makes those, you know, big circus catches, um, one handed catches uh, in, in the end zone. And I definitely think if this guy can be polished even more, he's just going to be an imposer and someone who is unguardable in one on one coverage, um, even if you're an elite corner, because that size is just so hard to match up against. But uh, again, you know, speed could could upgrade a little bit and and i would say with a guy his size you're mainly running him on streak so i'd like to see a little bit more variation in terms of the the uh, the, the route running um but and then again you know a guy with his size his ability to run after the catch and, and gain yards after the catch is is really really good so he's a very very promising prospect in terms of how rounded he is for the size he's at so i'm really excited to see him but charlie we move on now to our 15 to 11 this is where we're getting into we're getting into it this is the interesting part uh, we'll obviously have it up on the screen right here, but now we're going into definitely, I would say, top picks. These are these are the elite of the elite when you get into the top 15, top 10 range. Who do you have here? And and we haven't been listing it. Where do we have them on the big board? Just I, They saw, but... Just, I believe know. I've got them at number 12. That's Chris Olave. I really like Olave coming out of Ohio State. I think he obviously has some things he needs to work on, but he's one of the best route runners I've seen. Uh, in in my time as a draft analyst, which you know yeah. has not been that long, but his one concern is his hands, and I believe that he, he doesn't have great hands. But was that also said? Correct me if I'm wrong about C.D. Lamb. And yeah, well, but that's been an issue for C.D. Lamb. But I mean, it's been an issue for C.D. Lamb. But we've seen how good C.D. Lamb has played. 
yeah. regardless right. of those hands, he's making some incredible plays. He's playing really well for the Cowboys. He's one of the best young receivers in the league right now. So I think, obviously, with a little bit of work, Alave can turn into one of the best like it's not the best receiver in this class i know it, it'll be tough to, to pass garrett wilson who is ahead of him chris olave he's got the route running skills that can't really be taught he's so precise with his movements corners just can't keep up with him and he creates so much space to the point where his hands aren't that big of an issue because he can't drop him when he's wide open because he's a top receiver in this class and no receiver who's dropping wide open passes is going to be up here in our big board so that shows you how how little of an issue i think it is you might say hands should be an issue, but I think he'll be able to work on that. And he's got good enough hands to succeed at the next level. And that's why I've got him here and why we have him collectively at, at number 12. But uh, Keen, who do you got here? Yeah, so on to this one, I have probably my favorite prospect in the draft, and that's Ahmad Sauce Garner, cornerback from Cincinnati. I think, you know, if if Derek Stingley wasn't in this class, I think this guy would be the best cornerback. He's been fantastic. He has not allowed a touchdown in his college career. Um, he's been really, really good. I mean, when you talk about ideal size and, and some of these guys having the ideal size, this guy has it. Um, he is, I'm not sure um, uh if I'm not sure whether he's six two six three. Obviously, we saw a lot of changes last year. Like Bateman, we thought was a lot bigger, and then he ended up being six one six. But this year, Garner uh, or Gardner is uh, six two. I believe six two six three. So this guy's huge, six two six three. Yeah. And then they have him listed as one eighty seven. But I've heard commentators say two hundred. So he's in that range. That's big. I mean, that's that's a slim linebacker big. That's a really really yeah. big player. That's you know an imposing safety type size but obviously speaking about imposing this guy on the line of scrimmage is the best at jamming receivers with that size it's so hard to get around him it's so hard to get a good release when someone kind of takes up that much space and then we look at him obviously not the uh he's not the biggest guy but that's good you know you don't need a corner to be that big if he gets bigger then that just turns into a linebacker um he has that kind of slim length and and he's able to get to balls that other corners may not be able to. And I think that's what's going to separate him when we get farther into the draft class. Um, he's just been really, really good. Uh, and, and you look at that size and that vertical, and, and we've seen a lot of his interceptions on the sideline where they try and get the ball over him. But, you know, being that size, it's very hard to. So he's able to jump up and get picks. Um, really, really good in man coverage as well. Um, and I think his lateral and vertical movement is is, is very good considering that size. Um, and I think when you look at his plays, you look at his ability to go tackle, it really reminds me of, of kind of that recognition of a Jalen Ramsey, of, of a Jair Alexander, like those top corners to be able to recognize, get off coverage and go tackle a, a quarterback rushing out or a running back. And he has that kind of dog instinct to, 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 to make a tackle. Um, I think, you know, obviously some cons with someone as aggressive as him, um, you know, a little bit too grabby, a little bit too jittery, um, especially in, in man coverage and, and kind of gets his, his fair share of penalties and, and, and his speed seems to lack. But then when you look more into that tape, it doesn't seem to be a huge problem um, because generally the routes I've seen him cover haven't been as much of a run after the catch. But again, that's all very very much subjective because once you get into the league that will change um but i mean he looks like one of the most pro ready corners besides stingley i think he's the, the most pro ready corner besides stingley in this class and and arguably now the most pro ready since stingley has been injured um and, and he has a real like veteran way of playing cornerback he looks like an nfl corner when on a college team and he's been a big reason why cincinnati have had so much success this year but i i, I really like him um, i think this guy's gonna be a top 10 pick i um, mean obviously you know kind of capping off or or continuing this really really strong cornerback class but Charlie, yeah. now move on to 10 to 6. Getting more interesting. Now we're in the top 10 picks. Obviously, we have them up on the screen here. Now we get a little bit of quarterbacks. Um, but Charlie, who is your guy from 10 to 6? I've got, I know it may be a little boring to talk to, but another cornerback here. So you can oh, probably okay. already tell which way I'm going. But that's Andrew Booth. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, think he's love, I know that. He's incredible. He's such an aggressive player, but not 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 scared to hold back on penalties. He doesn't get a lot of penalties, which is nice. And a lot of those more aggressive corners do get a lot of penalties. Uh, I I really like Andrew with size too because he's got the size. He's I believe an inch shorter than Gardner, but uh, but just yeah. as fast. I think he's faster than Gardner by by a good bit, and he controls that speed so well, and he's such a calm player, and I just really like his... He's so athletic for the size he's got, and I think that's what makes him athletic, and I really like him because he's 
a ball hawking corner. He makes plays all over the field with that speed, with that height. And I just think he could turn into an incredible prospect. He is he's just a different kind of player because he's also such a good tackler. We talk about with a lot of the top corners in this class, they need to clean up on their tackling. But I mean, he he's very let's we'll put it this way, an enthusiastic tackler. He's not afraid to tackle because of that size. But yes, he's another one of those guys who if if he could improve one thing, it would be his finishing when making those tackles. He gets into good spots, but he leaves his feet a little bit early, allowing running backs to kind of push him aside like he's not there. So he just needs to finish. And if he uses that size to his advantage, he can bring pretty much any ball carrier down. Um, obviously, it's it's a different monster in the NFL when, you've, when you're coming up against guys like Derrick Henry who no corner can tackle. But um, I think along with Ahmad Garner, uh Gardner sorry Booth is that fighting for that cornerback two cornerback three spot and I think it's well deserved um yeah but that's that's what I got on Andrew Booth who do you got in this top elite group of players I think arguably the most exciting prospect and it's Malik Willis out of Liberty I think we're continuing that that quarterback who's not on a big team but very very highly ranked like the Zach Wilson and, and Trey Lance last year but this guy um, I would like to say he's a very raw quarterback I would say probably the most raw I've maybe ever seen but again not Trey not Lance. it hasn't been a too long time Trey Lance I, I think he's even more raw than Trey Lance I think this guy's at least a one-year sit and, and arguably a two-year um, sit but again that could all be coached up maybe he starts year one and and is great uh, this guy has the potential to be better than Lamar Jackson if he can touch up his rushing not rush excuse me if he can touch up that arm ability and that you know kind of going for the deep play every single play and going for that um, kind of get it all play which we saw from Zach Wilson, who is a very, very good sample kind of, uh, not sample size, but sample player we've seen in the league who's had trouble with that coming out of a school that's not as big. Um, I mean, this guy is ridiculous. Really, really good, safe quarterback. Um, and I know that very much contradicts what I just said, but in terms of when he sh throws in the, the mid-range to short um, passing, he has a 67% completion percentage, which is really good. Obviously, translating that to NFL, it'll probably decrease a little bit, but 67 is good. That's obviously up there with some of the better quarterbacks. And this guy's rushing ability, he's really, really shifty. So when you look at quarterbacks who are so hard to game plan against in the modern NFL, like a Lamar Jackson, you know, it's having that rushing ability is so hard to game plan against. And this guy looks just as shifty as Lamar Jackson. And if anything, a little bit more bulkier than um, Jackson was and is. Um, he's able to kind of, you know, get in and out of his cuts and, and definitely get create space downfield. Um, which, you know, again, really, really good. And then his arm town. This guy has all of the arm town. This guy can deliver the ball anywhere downfield and is really, really accurate. I think, again, the problem is when you look at, you know, a, a guy at a school that's not as big in the competition they play against, some of the passes look good but aren't as good. So that could be touchable a little bit. But I think this guy, if he's coached right, um, like he goes to a Ron Rivera offense in Washington or, or maybe a Matt Rule one in uh, – uh, mm -hmm or Joe Brady one in Carolina, this guy could be fantastic. He could be the next Cam Newton. You never know. Um, he, he's definitely just, he, he has that potential. But again, yeah. you know, very, very raw. Cons, very raw. Um, Decision-making problems, I would say, are, are a big one, which can result in, in, in very big kind of um, fl lashbacks in the NFL. But this guy is one of the most exciting players in this draft class. And we have him high. I believe we have him at nine, if I'm not wrong. We might have him a little bit higher. He is at, yeah, nine. So QB2, but... I think this yeah, guy could be QB one. But also, I th I have to voice my concerns with Mac Malik Willis. Sorry, I mean obviously he's shown great potential, but the conference he's in, the top team is Notre Dame, who Notre Dame are historically very good, and this year are I believe nine and one, which is uh, which is great. But it's not a conference known for producing quarterback talent, at least not recently. Uh, we saw Zach Wilson last year out of BYU, but. Since then, the top quarterbacks to come out of such a top college like Notre Dame are Joe Montana, which was a long time ago, or Joe Theismann, also a very long time ago. I believe those guys were both Notre Dame, but we don't see much from the conference in terms of quarterbacks because, yeah, it's not as big of a conference. So I've got my concerns with, with Willis, but, uh, but yeah, I think he's got the potential to, to be in that top 10. All right, Charlie, let's move on to the one to five, the big dogs. I have kind of a boring one here, but you'll have the graphic up on the screen. Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal, some of the big guys, obviously Kyle Hamilton, Derek Stingley, the the defensive leaders of this class, you know, the, the number one guys at their position. Charlie, 
I love the guy you're talking about. Who is it? Let us know. Why is at he arguably the best player in the class? Him. Yeah, at number three, we've got him. The college was just talking about at Notre Dame, but not a quarterback, not even on the offensive side of the ball. It's Kyle Hamilton at safety. And, oh, man, I think this guy's got the potential to be the best player in this class. Obviously, uh, Thibodeau is incredible. Stingley is also incredible. But what I love about Kyle Hamilton, he's got everything. I mean, I think the one weakness he has is playing slot cornerback. And he's a safety who's six foot four. So when is he ever going to be playing slot <laughs> cornerback in the NFL? Obviously, they may use him in more spots at Notre Dame because he's such a good player. And he can play slot corner, but it's not a strength. He's not he's not so quick keeping up with the smaller, really quick receivers. But he's got speed while he may not have quickness. And what he's really got is that size and strength. We've looked at guys like Jeremiah Wusu koromoa Isaiah Simmons come out of the draft. And Kyle Hamilton, I believe, is bigger than both of them. Um, I, I believe six Physically, foot probably not, but height-wise, yeah. He's six foot four, which is just incredible. He can play in that sub linebacker spot if they need him to, because he's got great hands and great ball skills just in general. Super big, can line up in so many different spots. Again, in the slot, single high, split high. It's just, he's such a well-rounded prospect that I don't know how he can't be towards the top of everyone's big boards right now. Great tackler as well. So he's got the run stopping in there even if they complete a pass against him, which is so rare, he'll bring him down, he'll make the tackle, good turning his hips, can face the ball, has, again, those great ball skills to find the ball, identify where it's going to be, and make the play on it. I mean, you don't toss the ball up in an area that Kyle Hamilton is in, and you don't direct your running back towards Kyle Hamilton. He's scary, kind of like a Jamal Adams kind of tackler. Uh, pretty incredible. I'm not going to compare him to Jamal Adams yet, but... I, I love Kyle Hamilton coming out of Notre Dame, and if it weren't for Thibodeau and Stingley, who I think are potentially even better prospects, I might have Hamilton at my number one spot in, in most yeah. other years. Yeah, no, I mean, it's crazy, especially someone as a safety to be that high. I mean, this guy is ridiculous. Yeah. But my player, it's, I don't want to say it's boring, it's disrespectful, but it's, it's, I'm going offensive tackle. I think we need to show this offensive line class some love, and that's Evan Neal out of Alabama. Um, obviously, very, very deep tackle class. I'd say it's not as top heavy as we would like to see. Right. Um, there's not, you know, it's Evan Neal, and then there's a decent drop. Um, I would say, you know, Moss is probably the next one, but even then, you know, there, th at the bottom, there's going to be a lot of second round tackles and a lot of late first round tackles that will go. Um, but I mean, Evan Neal, if you look at this dude, he is insane like the size this guy brings it's tackles like this um especially on alabama uh, you know it's it's just a, a a match made in heaven he he is huge the physical gifts this guy got are crazy he's six seven 351 pounds Jeez. that is unhuman like and he's only 21 he'll be 22 first year so he has he's, you know he's not gonna be 23 24 he's gonna have that that kind of um you know, a, ability, I don't even know how to say it, kind of that, he'll have that, that, that youth and, and that, you know, kind of tenure, hopefully on a team. Um, and, and I mean, obviously went to IMG and then Alabama, kind of the best combination there, but this guy in the run game is, you know, you can't really block him, you know, second level, he's not great at cause that speed cause of the size, but, um, you know, just moves guys in the run game at will. Um, and he, you know, he has that Becton like frame and for the jets who have that top pick, you get Becton and Evan Neal, if they can stay healthy as the best tackle do I've ever seen in a Jeez. long, long time in a long yeah. time. If you can get both of them, I don't think that will happen, but I mean, those two imagine they're literally, they're, they're kind of copy and paste. They're, they're very, very similar in terms of how they're coming out of the draft. But Evan Neal is more polished than Becton. Becton was questioned about being raw and Neal is much more obviously playing on the best, you know, college team we've seen for a long long time um he's just been uh, amazing that frame long arms able to get to the chest plate of edge rushers and just push them back and at the end of the day that's what an offensive lineman needs to do obviously cons what me and my other host dylan shalom say a lot is players who are over six six or six seven excuse me offensive linemen they're walking injuries and like makai becton who is not on the field a lot obviously when he is impact player but when he's not um, injury becomes a huge risk. So the problem to me, what I didn't even write down, but when teams look at how deep this tackle class is, if they're at four or five, they might want to go, all right, 
Evan Neal's fantastic, but I'm going to go Kyle Hamilton. I'm going to go Stingley. I'm going to go Aiden Hutchinson because I don't know how long I can have this guy on the field for. I don't know if injuries are just going to ruin his career. So I think definitely that is a little bit. He's a little bit over aggressive, which can cause penalties, especially at the next level in the NFL. You yeah. see a lot of these aggressive players. Penalties are a ginormous problem going into um, – going on to the next level and his lateral ability obviously is not gonna be fantastic if his lateral ability was good he'd be the best draft prospect to ever come out i mean you know if, if you're six seven three fifty and you can move like tyler linderbaum in this class you're gonna be drafted number one overall obviously he's not average lateral ability if if even that so that's a problem but i mean that size makes up for it you know guys that big are going are gonna go high if you guys did enjoy that video that was our big board um we hope you guys obviously um let us know what you think in the comments down below as always do make sure to follow us on social media at the sports scoop graphic will be over there as always keen mcdermott and charlie nidell more big board videos to come go make sure you guys check out our mock draft me and Serge kadali did um if you guys want even more analysis about 32 players but yeah we, we always love the big board videos let us know what you guys think in the comments down below we're always happy to talk about players we didn't get to in this video and as well we always do as the draft gets closer we do uh you know individual player analysis videos more of those will start to come out but uh yeah we're starting the draft earlier this year so we'll be much much more we'll be we'll be experts by the time the draft comes around even more than we were last year and we were pretty good at it last year so we hope you guys did enjoy keep mcdermott trying to see you next time